Hi. Uh, hi to everyone and hi to you, Cass. Hi, thanks for having me. I'm excited to be here with you. I'm excited actually to be here with you because what I find with live streaming is sometimes you're just so busy talking to yourself. It's like you need a minute to catch a catch a darn breath, if you know what I'm saying. And like, totally. you know, sometimes I finish and I'm like, that was so, that was just a lot of talking. So I'm glad I can offload half of it to you. Um, yeah, aside from I the agree. fact that I'm just glad to see you. Hi. <laughs> Hi, I've been glad to see you too. This is going to be awesome. I totally agree. Yeah. Sometimes um, when I go live for a whole hour, my mouth goes numb at the end because I'm like a little blah, 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 the whole time. And I'm like, whoa, that was intense. Yeah. Like Roni, who works with me, she said, I got to talk to you afterward about something. And I said, like, I'm going to need some time. Like after I do a live, I feel like I just need some time to like not talk to anyone and just decompress. <laughs> So, uh, you know, what's funny. Uh, welcome to everyone who's watching, by the way, and thanks for joining us. I'm really, I mean, listen, I love doing lives by myself, but I am really delighted to have Cass here. And a special thing about Cass, I think you probably get a sense of her when you watch her videos, but just behind the scenes, she's so freaking funny. So it's really nice to have you on here. I feel like we vibe, so it's nice. Um, yeah. We were talking right before we uh we went live because our photos were up and we were like wow we look so good in those pictures <laughs> and then Cass taught me how to filter myself here because i got up really early this morning um so that was um that's how i know she's a good friend she wasn't gonna throw me under the bus and say you know what melissa you can look tired i'm gonna show you how to filter yourself it was very sweet um yeah so um we also don't look like our beautiful yeah. photos so please no one feel bad yeah we were joking about it right before we went live because sometimes like i live in a filtered world i have an, uh, someone who helps me edit my videos and i watch my videos and i'm like yeah that's what i look like and then i watched one once where she, i looked real haggard and i was like was that, did i look like that that day and she's like cass i put a mild filter on all your videos usually and i was like this is what I really look like. It's pretty bad. Like I didn't know oh. what I really looked like. I wow. was. Yeah. So. Wow. That, that is, um, that's a mind bender. I was going to use another that word, but sad. we're live. So <laughs> mind bender. Okay. So uh, welcome everyone. There's a big sign up there that says, ask your questions in the comments. You're really lucky because you have me that hate. I mean, of course you're lucky because you have me. I hate cleaning. And you have the most perfect counterpart in the organization space because Cass, you struggle with organization and you also hate cleaning. Isn't that true? It's true. Yeah, I, I'm I'm a natural slob. That's my state. Yeah. And I do it's not our natural like habitat. House. Yeah. Yeah. This is honestly, I think the cleanest part of my my room, my everything that I have right here. In fact, I'm just gonna let you guys all see it. Looks real good. Yeah. Um it does look good. And look how organized you are. <laughs> I'm going to say, like, my house is really organized and it stays tidy. And that's not a lie. And that's like, despite my messiness, because I have these really awesome systems that just catch my crap. Can I say crap? It just, I think like, you can it, say crap. And I'm I also can just be gonna... messy, but it, it goes yeah. into little organized pockets everywhere. So then it's, I'm not messy. Does that, like, it's the, it's awesome. It and sense. I want to teach it to everyone because, yeah, we don't have to organize like we see on TV where everything's really, you know. And remember when you came over and you reorganized my pantry? Like you put that system in place maybe a year ago and that system yeah. still works. Honestly, that was a good system. So thank you. So Cash, we've got a bunch of questions flowing in. So what we're doing is we're kind of putting the organizing questions into the cast category and the cleaning questions into the Melissa category. So I'll hop in. I'll take a question first. It's from Karen. Karen says, how can you clean mildew in the shower without using harsh chemicals? So I always love a question where I can shout out a product that I love. Typically when people see mold in the shower, they panic. They want to use bleach. Bleach is an effective way to get rid of mold in the shower, but it's not the only way. So the product that I really like for this is called Concrobium. Have you used this before, Cass? No, I haven't heard of it. I almost want to take notes. 
teach me. Okay, so Concrobium, um, and if we're lucky, Roni might have a link that she can put up in the chat for us um, in the uh, YouTube comment section, uh, is uh, a low VOC, uh, non-toxic product that can help to fight mold and mildew. So you basically clean the area just using any bathroom product that you would normally use. You want to scrub it. You want to get rid of any kind of surface um, material. Okay. Rinse that. Then you're going to apply the concrobium. The package instructions are really clear. So you're going to use that. You let it sit for 24 hours. You rinse it and then you retreat it. And it kind of provides like a barrier. Um, and then of course, if it doesn't get rid of it in the first go, you would repeat but that's the way to go. So Karen, I hope that that helps. Good luck with that. That's good. I'm going to get some of that. That's awesome. Mm -hmm. Okay. I see, mm -hmm. I see a question here. Um, can I give advice to someone who suffers from depression tips for cleaning and organizing? And it's tough. It's tough when you are, you know, suffering with clinical depression, but even if you're just like, in down in the dumps too, it can be hard to get started. And it's a double-edged sword because your mess and the clutter also affects your mood and can cause you to feel lethargic and sad and just want to escape your surroundings. So um, here, here's what I recommend. Honestly, it's baby chunks because when you look at the mountain and you think, oh my gosh, this is going to take me hours. I'm going to start later. Why would I even, I'm never going to get it done. I'm going to fail anyways. You'll never take those actionable steps. So a great tip is putting on one song you like and just looking for trash and dirty dishes for the length of one upbeat song. Tell yourself I can do this for four minutes. That's basically how long a song is. And as soon as you eliminate the trash and the dishes, you're instantly going to feel better. And then maybe you want to put on a second song, but even if you don't, you've, had an improvement and you're going to feel better about yourself and your space is going to look better. I think that really is the secret, right, Melissa? It's not like all at the same time. It's little baby steps towards a greater goal that, that gets us there. Yeah. You know, I think that's, that's one of the reasons why I just love the way that you present your information so much, because very much like me, I love chunking into songs as well, or for me, it's podcasts. Like I'll just put on something short. If I know I have 10 minutes, I know I can go to, um, you know, this particular podcast, The Indicator, which is a nice economics podcast that's 10 minutes long. Um, you know, or if I want a 20 minute podcast, I have those. Like I've got all, I mean, I subscribe to a million. You can listen to Cass's podcast, Chad's podcast. There are lots that are available depending on how much time you want to spend. Um, but yeah, chunking it down, it really seems to work and you get that dopamine hit, which we... We're all looking for the hit. Let's be honest. Yeah. I have ADHD. So you're, you're right. Like listening to a podcast or for me, an audiobook, like a steamy, a steamy romance audiobook. Listen, <sighs> I call that going to Ooh. zombie town because it Ooh. shuts my, it like, I'm so engaged in what I'm listening to that my yeah. body just starts working at based on muscle memory and stuff gets yeah. done without me even realizing it. Yeah, I, I call that brain candy. Like you just kind of give your brain some junk food that you can really enjoy, you know? Mm -hmm. um, all right, so I have a question. Uh, let's see, this is from Jennifer Spears and then there's another one from Wanda C and they are both about hairspray. So I'm gonna group them together. So the Jennifer asks, how can I clean hairspray build up on my recliner? And then Wanda's question asks, how to clean hairspray build up from painted wood without harming the paint. Okay. So the thing about hairspray is it's, um, it's tacky. It can sometimes have like a, a carrier in it, like butane, which can be quite sticky over time, uh, to clean up. So with the recliner, with the upholstered recliner, I guess you would have to patch test, you know, th these are sort of these specifics, like these things that you know, I might not necessarily have run into before. I would say if I had to venture a guess, and this is a guess because I haven't tackled this before, I would try a product like, um, I would look for something that's got a bit of a solvent aspect to it because that tends to be uh, what would get rid of hairspray. But you'd have to test that on the surface first to make sure that it's safe. 
can I recommend a product specifically that I'm comfortable with? No, because I haven't tried it before. So the other two things you can try, Jennifer, the first would be trying Puracy, P-U-R-A-C-Y. Again, if Ronit has the link, she'll put it up for you in the chat. Um, Puracy is just a really good uh, stain remover in general. It's got surfactants. It's got enzymes, so it's really able to tackle different things that you throw at it. You would follow the package instructions for it, and you might want to use like a little bit of a gentle cleaning toothbrush, nothing too aggressive. Just, oh, thank you. Uh, we've got the link there. Just mm -hmm. to sort of clean up uh, that mess, but without agitating the fabric too much. Then you would want to rinse it. Um, the second thing would be using like the Bissell um, mini uh, cleaner, uh, mini, what do you call it? Like the mini, help me cast, oh my God. Friday brain. The mini What's upholstery it? cleaner, this thing. The old lady came. Little green machine. Little green that's machine. That's the one. Those were playing charades. This one. <laughs> okay. So I think that one might be uh, a good bet as well. That's kind of the go to in our house whenever we have any upholstery issues. And you're just going to use the liquid cleaner that comes um, with it, like Bissell sells their own. Thank you. We've got that link up there as well. Okay. Um, so you'll see it there. And then if it's in the chat, I think it's clickable too. So that'll be handy. Uh, let's get to Wanda's question. So the best way is to use a solvent to get hairspray off paint. So what you would want to do, you want to test in hidden area first to make sure that whatever you're using is not going to ruin the paint because we don't know all types of paints. We don't know all types of cleaners. So the first thing that I would try is rubbing alcohol. I would put a little bit on a cotton pad and I would gently, mm -hmm. gently guess I would gently test it to see if it removes it. If it does, proceed. If it doesn't, you're you're going to want to avoid using rubbing alcohol. Another great solvent that a lot of us don't know about is eucalyptus essential oil, but it has to be 100% pure eucalyptus essential oil. So the brand that I trust is called Thursday Plantation. Yes, Cass, I'm teaching you so much today. I'm excited because yes. I the back of my ba like bathroom door has like. Um, aerosol from my hair, whatever I'm putting on it yeah. over the door. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. So that's what you would do. And I'm, can I give a little tip? If that, if like you and Wanda, if you know that that's where you're doing it, um, maybe put a towel up on the back of the door when you're spraying or in an area so that you can just launder it like a gunky junky towel. That's good. Yes. Yeah. Okay. A Doogie RN has a comment here, a question, and I'm I'm here for it because this is one of my favorite things to talk about. And she says, where do I begin decluttering paperwork? She sees a lot of videos on decluttering clothes and other items, but no detailed videos on how to declutter and organize paperwork. And I am so excited about this because I have a five sort method for organizing paper. So you take all your paper, not, not the stuff that's like in filing cabinets, but the paper that you see everywhere. And you only have to sort into five categories and it's action, which means like bills I have to pay action. Short term is like things I have dealt with. Maybe it's a statement or a credit card bill. I could just shred it, but maybe I need it for taxes and I'm not totally sure. It just goes into short term. Long term are important things you know you need to keep, like contracts, taxes. Maybe I don't like, you know, you're like, I want to keep this for at least seven years. That goes into long term memory. It's a photo, it's an obituary, it's a lovely card. And the last is reference. Reference is like, I don't think I need this, but maybe I do, like a receipt you might want to return something or a catalog you might want to order from or a piece of paper that you want to read and research later. And these five categories are all you need. And if you come across something while you're doing the five sort just and you're like, I don't need this at all, it goes obviously into shred or recycle. But I feel like this dumbs down paper organization because when we start to sort into a thousand piles... Now we have decision fatigue. What pile does this go into? How many piles do I need? And what do I do with the piles when I'm done? So here's what I do. I have one, like I don't organize any further than that. All my short-term documents just get dumped into here. My long-term important ones go into my long-term. My reference go into my reference. And I have a memory bin for each family member. And if I stop there, that's good enough. And I can find anything. And one more thing. Listen, people are like, oh, you just dump it in a bin. January, 
February, March, April, like piling is kind of filing for the short term because they are going in chronological order when you organize like this. And then I only touch paper one day a year. I only organize the short term paper and the long term when I'm doing my taxes. And that's when I give everything a, a, like a filed home. So I only touch paper one day a year. I'm mesmerized completely mesmerized. Um, also, I want to point out, piling is filing. Whenever there's a rhyme, it's a universal truth. So yeah, you've cracked a code. Like mine is less is more when you're mopping the floor. Universal truth. Right? Oh, that's good. Yeah. Yes. That's good. Yeah. So you know what? Like, I love that system. And I didn't even think about it. But you're so right. Like if you're Piling every single day, everything is going to be in perfect chronological order. But but it and has to be sorted. By the way, I I do not. But listen, I'm a macro organizer. If you're watching this and you're like, oh, that's horrible, you're probably a detailed person. Please do it the way that works for you. But if you're struggling, like as long as you're sorting things out, like the important is separate from the memories and it's separate from the papers you've already dealt with. That five sort system is good enough. You'll never lose a piece of paper. You'll know where things are. You'll feel safe. And in, and you only have to deal with it once a year. I like, I love that. Honestly, Cass, good, good on you. I digitize cause I can't stand looking at paper. Um, mm. not that I'm taking away from your system and I know you're the no. organizing expert, but do I, it I, all different. Yeah. Do what works. Yeah. I wanted, to, I wanted to share this. Like I use my phone, by the way, if you saw me taking a picture earlier, it's because I was taking a picture. I'm going to share this later on social, but I will like, for example, if I have a document, I will take a picture of it, immediately label it and upload it into the Dropbox folder where it belongs. And then I walk this sad, pathetic little piece of paper over to the shredder and I just have a moment to myself where I shred it and I never have to look at that paper again. And then when it comes tax time, I will just send my accountants the link to that Dropbox folder. And That's like, smart. Bye. Yeah, but I, of course, I still always have to deal with accountants. And anyone that knows me knows that tax time is truly the most miserable time of the year for me. Um, yeah, I'm, uh, I'm not a friend of accounting. So anyway, uh, all right. CMCE87 says, I hate cleaning baseboards. Can someone help or suggest a tip for cleaning skirting baseboards and baseboards? Yes. Lots of tips. I want to keep it nice and easy for you. And by the way, thank you for that super chat, Megan. Thank you so much. That was really, really kind, Megan. Thank you. Um, I'm not used to that. I'm used to being tipped back in the days when I was a server, but that is very <laughs> kind. So thank you. Um, baseboards. So the maker's mop is such a great easy way to clean baseboards the reason we love it is because it's taco shaped it's curved so you don't really have to work too hard or finagle to get into the baseboards it kind of does um your 90 degree angle all at once with just one simple movement and if you have like a multi-layer baseboard um you can sort of just move it you know from left to right and then sort of reposition it and move it from right to left you can kind of just move that way Alternatively, if you have a handheld vacuum, you can use that with a brush attachment, or even if it's like a, cord, a plugged a plug in vacuum, whether it's upright or canister, those would be the easiest ways to do it. And remember, you always wanna dust first, wipe second. You never wanna wipe a dusty baseboard or else you're essentially gluing the dust to the baseboard. Over to you, Ken. That's good. I got to do that. I got to dust first and then wipe. Yeah, because I like kind of spread the goo and then I got a glump. Yeah, good. Okay, sorry. Uh, Jeannie says, old photo organization and storage, please. Again, this is how I love organizing photos. I will grab boxes. If you have bigger photos, this is a great size box here because this can hold like an eight and a half by 11. So I just grab boxes or photo boxes. And then what I'll do is decide the categories before I start sorting. So do I want to sort them by decade? Do I want to sort them by like my childhood, my kid's childhood now that we're older? You know, not tons of categories. Think of like four or five categories. Spread your boxes out. And now all you do is you're like, oh, this one goes here. This one goes here. This one goes here. We're not super organizing. We're just sorting them into the boxes. 
that's good enough. Then to take it to the next level, you can go on Amazon and find acid-free tissue paper line the box with the acid-free tissue paper, put the photos back in, kind of wrap it up like you would if you were giving a gift, and label the outside of the photo box. Now those photos aren't going to fade. They're not going to have like, you know, how old photos, it's the, the acid-free paper will protect them and keep them for years to come. That's what they do in museums. So um, I think we overthink photos sometimes. We're like, I have to put them in scrapbooks or I have to like get super detailed. No, I call these discovery boxes. So then now you can open up this beautiful box and like go through the photos and look at them and be like, these are photos from, you know, your childhood or Izzy's childhood or from when my grandmother was young. Discover the photos, wrap them back up, and you can organize 20 years of photos in about 20 minutes this way. Wow. Uh, for those of you who are just joining, you're joining myself, Melissa Maker, and Cass from Clutterbug, and we are here today answering your cleaning and organizing questions. We've got our uh, handles up here if you want to follow us here on YouTube or if you want to follow us on Instagram. Cass is also a big, big fan of Pinterest, and uh, she's got a great website filled with all sorts of great resources, a quiz to find out what kind of organizing style or organizing bug you are yeah, what did we call so it? Was it butterfly was you're a butterfly? butterfly but you've oh, got some God. bee tendencies you are a little detailed in some areas i feel like you're oh, probably a bee in some parts and and a butterfly in the stuff that doesn't really matter you know Float like, like a butterfly sting like a bee yeah yeah that feels that, accurate that feels accurate mm, um <laughs> but yeah you can you can learn so much more about cass's um Cass's offerings over on her website and she is hilarious and brilliant and super dedicated to helping make organizing easier. So of course, if you have any questions, leave them in the comments for us. Uh, and of course you can visit us over at cleanmyspace.com and our sister site makersclean.com where all of our microfiber cleaning tools and so much more are available. Uh, all right. I have a question from Libby Chapman. And the question is how to clean a stain that has been on my mat bathrobe for years and I don't know what it is. Oh, okay. So Libby, I feel you. The mystery stain is really tough. And I'll tell you why. Because in order to know how to get rid of the stain, we generally have to know what the stain is because there is um, an antidote for each type of stain. Now, the other thing that's kind of working against you is the longevity of the stain. So the longer it's there, uh, the more times it's been through the wash and hasn't come out successfully, the harder it's going to be to remove. I'm not trying to discourage you. I'm just trying to be real with you. That's my job. But I'm going to give you a couple of options. First of all, if it is like an orangey stain, it might be a bleach stain if it's a darker bathrobe, in which case it is permanent. So we got to accept that. If it is a darker stain, so a shade darker than whatever color your bathrobe is, it's probably an oil stain. So it won't be able to come out it might, but it's gonna be really hard to the point where I would just say, is it worth getting rid of? Like, is it worth my time or can I live with it? The other things you can try um, would be a color corrector. So let's say it's a makeup stain, right? So we're probably dealing with a dye, a pigment. So we would wanna use something like a hydrogen peroxide or an OxyClean. You'd wanna apply that to the surface of the stain and keep it wet for as long as you can. So if you're really dedicated to the cause, you would take OxyClean, you would spray it, and like every hour on the hour, you would just keep it wet. And I know that sounds weird, but these stain removers don't actually work if they're dry. They have to be wet. And sometimes like an eight-hour soak is going to do it, whereas a one-hour soak isn't. So that can be something like if you happen to be like home on a weekend and you're not really doing much, set an hour timer and just retreat it. I know it sounds weird, but it is totally worth a shot. That's going to color correct. The other thing you can try is Piracy. I've talked about it before uh, during this. And I just, I've had such great success with Piracy. The other thing I want you to know is that old stains, they're going to need some work. So you might have to retreat it three, four, five times but at that fifth time, you might get rid of it. So don't give up hope, Libby, but just keep in mind the things that I mentioned. I hope that helps. 
Oh, that's good. You're good. Okay. I'm going to do two quick things. Uh, Kita, I hope I'm saying that right, asked, where do we find more information about the five paper sort category? There is a video on Facebook, and I think you guys will probably post it in there that just breaks that down. So that's the easiest way to kind of remember. And then Lady B says, I'm overwhelmed today. Day two of decluttering, and you've been crying. It's one room that's overwhelmed. What do you do after trash bag therapy? Yeah, well, I'm glad we caught you early because one of the things that I think I'm not I'm not gonna throw anyone under the bus here, but some experts say when you want to declutter, you take everything out and you make big piles and then you start sorting. And this is not a great way to go if you have a lot of stuff or you're easily overwhelmed because now you've just made it even worse and you still don't know where to go. So I love that you've started with trash bag therapy, which is just grab a garbage bag and look for trash. That's awesome. Now you have two other methods you can use for step two. One is the Easter egg method. So you're going to grab a box for donate, a donatable cardboard box, and you're going to hunt like for chocolate, except instead of delicious chocolate, you're just looking for obvious things that you haven't used in the last year, you don't really even like, and you can gift to someone else. And calling this a gifting box is sometimes really helpful to let go. You can drop these things off at a charity shop that's going to help the community. So we're not making piles. We're just looking for things that we can gift to someone else. And if this isn't, you're like, I'm not really ready for this, that's okay. The second phase is it's called the no mess method by Dana K. White. So you pick up one thing and you're like, I'm going to put this in a home and it probably doesn't have a home right now. So I'm going to put this in the first place. I would look for it. That's not a pile piles. It doesn't count. And then go to that place. If that place is so full that this can't fit one thing that's less important now can go into your gifting box. And then you go back and you grab one more thing. And I know this feels like ugh, slow and steady. This is how we do it. This is how we make progress without getting overwhelmed. Because if you decide to stop 10 minutes from now, you haven't made a mess and you're better. Your space is better. And then you do it again tomorrow. And the Easter egg method is the same. If you stop, you haven't made a mess. You haven't made a million piles. You haven't pulled things out. You're only making progress. Yeah. You know, I've, uh, I think I know who's under the bus right now. And I think that method works for some and it is it super therapeutic for some. And mm -hmm. I totally agree with you. Like for other people they they, it just makes absolutely no sense and it puts them over the edge. So I think that's, that's the beauty of having access to so many different methods and people like you can just find your person and you can follow their path. And I hope Lady B got something out of what you said, because I mean, that mm -hmm. was so useful. Okay, Tia Life says, how to get rid of hard water stains on shower glass. Oh, this is an easy one. So I'm- Oh, I need this, I asked, need this. Okay, I'm happy, like, I'm sad for you that this is an issue, but I'm happy because this is an easy problem to solve. Oh my God, look at Cass, getting that pen and paper. She's so ready. Okay. So first I want to talk about a preventative measure. It's something that I have talked about for a long time. Cass, I know you know what I'm going to say. It's the oh. squeegee, the squeegee. you got to do it. Um, this morning I was particularly resentful at this method because I, I was so rushed getting Riley off to school. I finished the gym. I like, oh my God. I was like, I can't squeegee. I don't have time. But then I was like, get back in there and squeegee. <laughs> it's like 30 seconds. But the reason it's so important is because with no droplets left behind on the gas, the gas, the glass, with no droplets left behind on the glass or the tiles, there is nothing that can be uh, left behind. There's no trace minerals that can be left behind. The water is gone. So are all the hard water minerals that go with it. So is the soap gone. It just goes down the drain. So that squeegee is going to save you. So what you can do now to fix the issue, you have a few different options. Um, the first thing you can do is use a mild, uh, like an acidic product. So you can use regular vinegar, 5% acidic acid. You can use full strength vinegar slash cleaning vinegar 
six to 10% acidic acid. You can find both of these in the grocery store. You're gonna spray it onto the surface and let it sit. Then you're gonna use a non-scratching sponge. You're kind of gonna work in a circular motion. Some people have been daredevils and they've used steel wool, super fine steel wool. This gives me anxiety, but if this is something you choose to do, you would have to make sure that the surface is wet and that the steel wool is wet. Now, people have sworn by this method. I won't use it, but if that's something you want to try and you have heavy duty water stains, you can try that. You can also try a product. Uh, Ronit might have a link to this called CLR Brilliant Bath. So CLR is an EPA um, Safer Choice certified product. Um, it's designed to remove calcium, lime, and rust. The reason why it's good in this particular delivery method is because it's foaming. So what we like about foaming when it sprays on a surface is it's clingy. And when it's clingy, it stays and it can do its job, right? Whereas if it's drippy, it kind of just drips down and it can't really stay on and do what we need it to do. But when it's a foam and it's clingy, it kind of stays there. And then we can scrub it off, rinse it, and typically we'll have really good results. So you're going to have to invest a bit of time in getting rid of it initially. And then once it's gone, just squeegee, turn on that fan during and after the shower for at least 30 minutes. Problem solved for good. Okay, can I use your reusable scrub cloths? Because listen, I'm just gonna say, those are the greatest cloths I've ever used in my entire life and I use them all over and I use them to wash my dishes Aww. and I they're like, where have you been all my life? Those things should be mm. like, scrub daddy who? Honestly, the top of my stove, anytime. I the, And I just wash it and I've had those like for like what, a year now? And I wash yeah. them all the time and they're still scrubby. That's freaking genius. Oh, thanks, Cass. Yeah, we love them because they are machine washable. Yeah, thanks, Cass. Thanks for that shout no, out. Awesome. Um, yeah, they you are, can they totally are good. use them. Okay. That's that's what it, I mean. That's what I use. Um, former, like formerly, I would use the um, Scotch Brite non scratch scrub uh, scrub sponges, but I just I prefer these because you don't have to throw them out. Alrighty, uh, they last Cass, forever. Like, is you. this gonna last forever, Melissa? Listen, I have washed these. I use these every day, all day for all, and I've washed them hundreds of times, and they still are super scrubby. Like, what? Yeah, no, they're really good. I've I've ruined a couple because I've cleaned um, I've cleaned like some really uh, gritty surfaces. Like, I have an air fry rack, and I clean that, and it's hashed. And let me tell you, the, the scrub cloth did not survive that one, but I feel like you have to work really hard to hurt it. Like generally speaking, when you're cleaning a flat surface, you're not going to have trouble with it. And like my pots and pans. Yeah, no, it's, it's, it's amazing. Like we are so proud of that product. It's awesome. Thank you. It is. Okay. Sweet Chick says, struggling with motivation at the moment because you have so much stuff to declutter. Yeah, it's it's so tough because we look at the mountain. I think we do this with anything in our lives, not just decluttering, but when we have a big project to tackle, we look at the whole thing and we have this weird all or nothing mindset. Like if I'm going to get started, I want to be able to finish it. So I better wait till a Saturday and get the kids in daycare or book a whole day off, or I better take a week off work or I'd better, you know, all these things. Or and like then the like diet that, starts Mondays. So I'll just eat like a pig until Monday. I mean, I've been there for sure. Same. Same we, it's human It's human nature. And in the meantime, we keep procrastinating and putting things off and then the problem becomes worse. So w breaking things down into small little chunks is the secret for two reasons. One, you're making progress and you can do it in five minutes. But two, the reason you don't want to get started is because you feel so much shame and guilt. What you need to feel is pride and happiness. And when you achieve a goal, you feel so freaking proud of yourself that it rewires your brain. Like this is science. And you start thinking of decluttering as positive because you've had success and it's given you endorphins and dopamine. So here's what you do. My favorite thing to do is 21 item toss. So you grab a bag and a box and you look for 21 things that can leave. It can be a scrap piece of paper that goes in the trash. It can be a gum wrapper, 21 things that are leaving and then you're done. And then you're like, ooh, I did a 21-item toss today. That felt good. I'm proud of myself. 
And you get that little rewiring of your brain that's training you and teaching you that this feels good. So you want to do it again tomorrow. And it keeps strengthening that muscle, strengthening those positive reinforcements. And before you know it, you look forward to decluttering. You enjoy decluttering. I I love going through and letting go now because it feels so good because I've trained my brain that it feels good. And that is why I don't struggle and clutter anymore because I used to train my brain that it was bad and toxic and negative and I was going to fail anyways. And it was overwhelming and it was exhausting. And I, I couldn't even climb the mountain because I made it 10 times bigger in my mind before I even took one step. Hmm. That's, that's a really impactful answer. I hope that helps. Um, sweet chick, I really hope that helps. I that resonated with me. All right, Zim Chiquita. I hope I said that right. Okay, I'm assuming I said it right. Hi from the UK. Love you and your cleaning system. What's the brand model of the upright vacuum that you use, and would you recommend it? Yes. So uh, full disclosure, I am partial to Dyson because I, I mean, long before I became a Dyson spokesperson. Um, I'm talking like when I first started Clean My Space Services back in 2006, shortly thereafter, I just started to recognize the difference in technology with Dyson um, and appreciate what their vacuums were capable of doing. So I've always been uh, a big fan of their products. And then for the past, I want to say five years, I've worked with them in a spokesperson capacity. So um, I will only talk about Dyson vacuums uh, because I am passionate about them. Um, but Cass, I'm, I'm open to hearing what you have to say. So the current model that I use is the Gen 5 Outsize, which is their latest technology. Uh, if you're in the UK, you would absolutely have access to Dyson because, of course, they are a proud UK business. Um, so the Gen 5 Outsize is the full-size um, newest model that they have. Um, the latest technology is just great and efficient and powerful and smart and does a lot of the work for you. It's got um, the optic uh, light that scatters light on your dirt. going to say. Isn't that amazing? Like if you <gasps> haven't vacuumed. Amazing. No, it is amazing. No, it's actually amazing because <sighs> I turn the lights off when I vacuum and I, like, I feel like a freaking powerhouse when I'm doing it. Cause I'm like, my house is so much cleaner now. Like yeah. what was I even doing before? So yeah, yeah, I can't say enough about that vacuum and it's a core, it's a cordless vacuum. So you charge yeah. it. They also have, um, the smaller version, which is the gen five absolute. Gen 5 Absolute. So it's the smaller version, um, which is great for, I'd say, spaces like under 1,500 square feet. And then anything above that, I think the outsize makes more sense. I, I got to just jump on this. So I, I'm so cheap, you know, and I was like, I'm not spending money on a Dyson. That's crazy. And then I had like four, can I say this? I had like four sharks and they all broke over the years. I spent more on those that didn't last than I did on the Dyson. That's like a powerhouse. But I too got the laser vacuum. Now, mm -hmm. here's the thing. I am a, now a weirdo who vacuums in the dark, but can mm -hmm. we just give a disclaimer? Your floors look clean until you turn on that laser. So it's is so it gross. a good thing, Melissa? No, it's nuts. I'm a psycho now. I'm a psychopath because I'm not only vacuuming in the dark like a weirdo, but I'm like, it's not clean because look at all the, it, it can it can make you a little bit crazy because it can you have no idea how dirty your floors are. It illuminates yeah. every speck of dust. It's crazy, but also you can see where you vacuumed and where you haven't because yeah. sometimes you're vacuuming a floor and it doesn't look dirty and you're just like, I'm just not going to do the corners. You turn on that laser and it's like this thick of dust in the corners. You will There's not no way you're not the doing the corner. Yeah. You know, you bring up a really good point. So I have this, I have this little mantra in cleaning that I, or just in life where I say buy once, buy well. And I really feel yeah. that about Dyson. And you mentioned that with your other brand, other brand, notice I'm not naming names. Um, <laughs> right. Uh, and yeah. I, I feel that way too. Like when I've tested other models or brands, I've noticed like these are really good for a short period of time. And yeah. yes, you're spending a quarter that you would you know, on investing in a Dyson, but 
they are built to last. Case in point, uh, my dad has one of my much older Dyson stick backs. I want to say I gave him the V11, which is probably at this point four years old. And there was an issue with the filter. He took it to get repaired and it works. Like he went to a Dyson, he called their customer service. It all got taken care of and the thing works brand new. The parts are warranted for a year. Like it's pretty amazing. So, yeah, you know, it is. I think they, it's a, it's a product worth investing in. And I'm just going to say like, if you're going to invest, I, I don't know much about Dyson, but like the fact that it's cordless like my, I feel like it, get a cord, get it cord, cordless. Are they all cordless? Because I clean so much more because it's so convenient. I actually put it yeah. in the pantry and I hung it right there. So instead of like, I'll vacuum once a, on the weekend when I can do the whole house. Now it's like, oh, we spilled boop -dee -dee. Like it's crazy. Yeah. My house is so much freaking cleaner now that yeah. I have a Dyson. And I forgot to charge it too for like days and it just sits there and then I'll use it and then I'll leave. And that battery like does it die? I've, I've, it's, it's crazy. And I had an issue yeah. with it and they sent me parts for free and I got them two days later for yeah. free. Yeah. They were I, just like, oh, you, like covered under warranty. All the things you're saying. Totally, totally. The laser, I'm glad it's I not just coming how I me. feel about the laser. Like I don't no, know. You do. Feel. I know how you feel about the laser. Listen to you. You feel better about your life because your house is ultimately cleaner, even though you're horrified about how dirty your house was prior to using the laser. And even now, like I turn on that laser and I'm like, oh my God, I had no idea how dirty my floors were. And then I'm like vacuuming yeah. and Joe's like, it's the, the floors are clean. I'm like, shut the lights out and see how clean they are, you know, like, um, and with the dog, I'm sure like, I know with the yeah. cat, it's like, I'm like, she lives in, in the kitchen. This is a retired animal. She doesn't move and there's cat hair all over. I just don't even know how it gets there, but I see it. Oh my, that laser, it can make you a little cuckoo for Cocoa Puffs, Melissa. All right, what do we have next? Oh, oh, it's me. Um, the gentle reptile question. How do I deal with big furniture in a small space? You think you might have to get rid of your dresser, but you kind of don't want to. Now, this is such a bummer question because the truth is we have the space that we have. And we have to live for the home that we have today. And I think a lot of the times oversized furniture can make your space feel a little claustrophobic and it can make you feel like just not happy in the space. So if you love a piece, if you're like, I love this and it's a family heirloom, then keep it. But if you're keeping it because you're like, well, that's a good piece of furniture, but every day you walk into this space and you're not really utilizing it properly and it's kind of making you feel bad about your home, I think your ultimate goal should have a space that you feel is beautiful and that you feel proud of and that you love. And if you don't love things and you're not using that furniture, let it go. And I personally am not a fan of dressers to begin with. That's me biased because it doesn't work for my organizing style. But um, yeah, I mean, if it's not a really special piece and you're not using it for storage purposes, I think it'd be great to gift it to someone else and give yourself back the gift of a little bit more space in your home. Love that answer. Yeah. I wonder why you don't like dressers. Is it because it's so easy to dump things in there and not look at them again? Because I'm not a folder. So yeah. I, you have to be like, I like to just dump. <laughs> So, so wait, so I, what do you I, do with like underwear or t-shirts? Yeah, I have big baskets. So I pull them out when I'm putting away laundry and I put the baskets on the floor and then I have my laundry basket and I shoot them in like a basketball into the appropriate basket. And then I put the baskets away and my kids do this too. And a basket can hold a lot more than a dresser drawer and it doesn't get stuck when you're pulling it out. And it just makes so wait, putting do you fold t-shirts. I hang. So I bring all the hangers to the basket and I'll scoop, 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 and then lay them flat and then put them away in an instant. I don't fold anything, not one thing. I roll towels. That's about as foldy as I get. Um, but I don't, because I'm, because otherwise I just procrastinate or I would yeah. sit and like fold in front of the television for some reason and then never put it away. It's like you're mm -hmm. doing the work and then having to do the work again to put it away. Now I just bring the mm. basket right from the dryer to the room and I boop, 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 
And as long as it would have taken me to quicker than it would take me to fold, everything's put away into the cubbies. Wow. That's brilliant. I like that. System. Or lazy. It's lazy. but And this isn't for everyone. But um, if you're reluctant to put away clothes because it's like a whole thing, this is a shortcut for sure. Yeah. No, it's great. All right. Our friend, How to Get Your Shit Together, says 100% recommend the Maker's Mop. I know you love it. I know you love it. Um, personally use it and love it. And also it gets my mother's seal of approval. Thank you for that comment. I appreciate that. You are so sweet and such a fan. And uh, How do I know we get your mother here. I love her. Come to Canada. Let's hang out. The but you know, it's funny. She also says like, she'll, her mom will like take her maker's stuff back to Ireland. And then she's like, I need more now because my mom took it. So it's pretty funny. Uh, but thank you. I so appreciate that comment. Um, I really do. Thank you. Uh, Tammy Williams says you've been decluttering for about a year. You're 82 and you started to keep um, your oh. kids from having to do it later. Oh, that's so good. It's become a hobby. It definitely feels good in your enthusiasm. Several friends are into it too. You caught the decluttering bug. You're an influencer. I love that. I love that. Influence yeah. your friends to do the same thing. Which is honestly such a gift to your loved ones. I think this is something we don't think about. No one is going to be around forever. And when we hold on to a bunch of things, like it's, it's a burden to our family. So not only are you doing a gift to your loved ones, but you get to reap all the joys and all the benefits that come with like every day you're doing something awesome. You're like, I'm proud of myself. I accomplished something and you're sharing that with other people. So I'm so happy for you, Tammy. And, and thank you for just inspiring other people too. I want to make, I want to just make a comment on Tammy's comment and yours as well. So my mom, has done the same thing. And my she's 73. She might be watching. Hi, mom, if you're watching. And she is a notorious declutterer. Like sometimes I'll say, Hey mom, like, do you want thing XYZ? Like I have an extra one, or like I was sent this thing and I don't really need it. And she'd be like, Nope, don't need it. No, thank you. Even if I have like an extra container of, you know, a cleaning product, if she doesn't have space for it in her one designated closet she will not take it she is a notorious declutterer and her when her mom passed away um back in the early 2000s my mom and her two sisters had to declutter her entire apartment and it was a probably a years long job like it was a lot of work mm -hmm. and it was very emotionally exhausting for the three of them um, you know, and they all had to coordinate different times and lots of decisions had to be made. It's just a huge emotional burden and time burden to put on your family, the next generation. So, um, honestly, Tammy, that's a, that is a brave move and I don't use that lightly. That's a hard thing to do and it's a real service to your family. So good on you. Um, Libby asks a question about kitties, which I am delighted to answer because I, deal with this quite frequently. Libby Chapman says, when the cat throws up, should I use a disinfectant first or enzyme? So let's talk through cat, cat throw up, dog throw up, pet throw up, pet urine, pet feces, whatever it is, okay? So the first thing you wanna do is you wanna flatten and dry the stain, okay? So it's a Tuesday morning, Molly's thrown up a hairball on her retirement chair because that's where she lives in the kitchen they yeah those chairs have been brutalized and um the first thing i will do is i'll grab a paper towel scoop up whatever solid i can and then i will press it to dry as much as i can you want that area flat and dry because that's going to get rid of any of the excess liquid um, that could possibly spread around and create more staining or more odor so that's job one Job number two is using an enzyme. So I'm not so worried about disinfectant yet because enzymes are typically going to take care of and break down any, anything that's coming out. Okay. So what you're going to do is you're going to follow package instructions. You're going to spray the surface, let the product sit. Some enzymes are no rinse. Some have a rinse requirement. So just follow the instructions. Nature's Miracle makes a great product. Rocco and Roxy makes a great product. Um, BioClean, that's one that we've pulled up. That makes a great product as well. All are wonderful for removing pet stains. 
Following that, if you are still concerned after the after the stain has dried, if you're still concerned, you can get an aerosol type uh, disinfectant as long as it's safe to use on upholstered surfaces. You would want to make sure of that. Clorox has one. It, it comes in like a an aeros like a plastic but aerosolized sprayer. Um, and the reason that one's good is because it gets you like a nice mist coverage. It's not like a splashy spray bottle. Uh, and it just sort of settles in on the surface and it's a no rinse. So that's what you could do. But I don't really, I don't really worry about the disinfecting and my family's all alive and well. So I hope that answers your question. Can I share something gross with you real quick and get your opinion? I know we're running out Always. of time, but I have to say. Okay. Give me the so gross. Yeah. So we moved into a new house and they obviously had a cat and there was like a cat pee smell. I couldn't get rid of in the front living room. There's carpet and someday we'll replace the carpet, but it was coming from this one corner. So I used my little, my little green machine and that was really yeah. wet, but then I could really smell it. Um, yeah. So I sprinkled it with baking soda on the wet. Now I know what you're thinking. That's crazy. My husband's like, you're just going to make a paste. And I was like, I don't know what else to do. So I sprinkled a bunch of baking soda on it wet. Not a great idea. I came back. The baking soda was yellow. Yeah. It had sucked yeah. from the carpet. So then I repeat yeah. and then I let it dry and then I vacuum the baking soda and I repeated yeah. this process and it was less yellow. I did it a third time. There was no more yellow. Did that baking soda suck the pee out of the damp carpet? Yeah. Yeah. That's what happened. So, um, I mean, it's great that you did that because that is, uh, that is a great method that you can use. What happens when you wet a stain like that is you rebloom the odor. So it's kind of like you're awakening it again, right? Like and smell it wetting it. Yes. Yeah. It's, it's, it's a tough one to deal with, but that baking soda trick is really good. And you bring up a good point. You're not supposed to vacuum wet baking soda because it can really mess up the inner workings of your equipment. So exactly what you did, you're gonna wet the surface, heavily sprinkle the baking soda, then you can vacuum it up. My recommendation is to use a, a wet dry vac to do this. That way you're not gonna ruin your more expensive vacuum. Um, and then repeat until you notice no more yellowing. But yeah, it's it's a job to get rid of that. I, uh, I've been but it, I. I was like, this may be the baking soda on wet. I never heard of this. And it like really sucked things out like in a yeah. gross, disgusting way. I just had to share that because yeah. you were, yeah. you would, okay. Um, sorry. I Elizabeth would appreciate said, it. <laughs> yeah, you would. Thank you. Elizabeth said, um, what about the paper that her kids generate in arts and crafts form? They produce more and bring more paper home from school. Yes. And I have a really awesome tip for you because I had little ones that were always bringing not only artwork home, but like assignments and report cards, maybe school photos. What do you do with that? So here's the secret. You have each family member has to have a memory bin, but that memory bin can be stored like somewhere in your home in like a storage or something. One big tote for each family member. But what I have is a memory catcher in my entrance way. It's a big basket. So as things come in, they all feel really special, right? I throw it in my memory catcher. And then once a year, I empty that memory catcher and I move the really special things into the memory bins once a year. And the nice thing is I've had some time and I have so many things to choose from I'm able to pick just the best of the best and cultivate a really beautiful collection for my kids because they do not want 5,000 handmade drawings when they're older. But it, I have that separation, that time, so that everything doesn't feel special. So get yourself a memory catcher right in your entranceway. Everything goes into the memory catcher. And then once a year, you sort into the memory bins and you'll easily be able to get rid of 90% of it because you're just keeping the best of the best. That's a great answer. Riley brings home colorings like color colored in sheets. And to me, those are just garbage. It's like, I'm so glad yeah. you picked up a, pen a pencil crayon today. Like that's just garbage. But when she draws something and it's really beautiful or she brings home some writing, like that's special, that's getting kept. Um, mm -hmm or passed on to um, the grandparents. All right, so we've got a few more questions. I think we're gonna run a little long just so we can get through all these because we really, really have some good questions here, Cass. Are you okay to push on for a little yeah. longer? 
For sure. Okay, great. So um, Megan M says, what are the best products to sanitize really grimy clothes? My daughter works at a vet's office and I want to make sure they're clean. So, you know, this is such, Megan, I'm so glad you brought this question up. So in most cases, it is my opinion that you are just fine with laundry detergent. I use Tide, Free and Gentle, Hygienic Clean. That's my go-to, cold water. Okay, but I don't work at a vet's clinic. I'm not bringing that stuff home every day. If you want, you can step it up. There are uh, laundry sanitizer products that you can get. The thing you've got to keep in mind with these products is it's not just like a dump and go situation. Sometimes you've got to soak the product in the laundry sanitizer ahead of time. Now, some of my friends in the laundry space would advocate for using bleach um, and adding bleach to sanitizer clothing. If this is something you're comfortable with, you are more than welcome to do that. It will sanitize your clothes, as will washing on the hottest possible cycle. So if your machine comes with um, like a sanitize function or like a steam function, whatever the case may be, you might want to chuck all of her, I assume she wears scrubs. You might want to chuck all of her scrubs into a separate um, laundry bin. And then once a week, so you're not constantly running these loads, but once a week you're running a super hot sanitized load, that would take care of it. Again, if you want to add anything, you can try adding bleach. Uh, you can also try adding um, like a laundry sanitizer, but just be mindful that some of them require soak time before they will actually be deemed effective. Um, but that's what you can do. All right. And I hope that helps. And lots of people in healthcare uh, will do that. And I don't blame them. I love how you mentioned the Tide because I'm always like, I'm cheap and I'm always like looking. Sometimes I, I was like using Earth Breeze sometimes, but if the clothes stank, Tide, man, all day Tide. You know, when you've- I gotta tell you, Tide. I know you've told me before that you're cheap and like, listen, I don't, I don't like to squander money on consumable products either, but there are- like, for example, why would I buy cheap paper towels when I know I'm going to have to use three or four of them to do the same thing that one sheet of good quality paper towel could do? And it's the same with laundry detergent, right? Like with Tide, it gets the job done the first time. So everyone's so concerned about being eco-friendly when they do their laundry. Well, it's not eco-friendly to have to rewash your clothes two, three times, right? Um so just yeah. food for thought. Anyway. It, it, it's it's the most powerful cleaning laundry detergent I've tried. And I feel like I've tried all of them. But I don't, I, I mean, if I'm just washing, like sometimes, I, but if it stinks, it's tied. It's tied. If it's my kids' clothes, it's tied. If yeah. it's really dirty, it's freaking tied, man. It's pretty amazing. Yeah. It really is. I I don't like paper towels. I'm just gonna say that I've never really used them, and I've only had to start buying them because my dog won't stop vomiting. It's a whole other thing, but um, mm -hmm. yeah. I, yeah. There's I, a time I, and a place for paper towel. Even even I, the queen of microfiber, can admit that. Yeah, so Kita says um, dis, uh, her garage is a total mess, disorganized and dirty. You can't find anything in there. You've moved three years ago and you haven't been able to tackle the mess. How do I start? Do you know why garages are so hard? Because they don't come with storage built in. It's not like they have closets with shelving like our home and cabinets like our kitchen. So where do you put anything? And everything just kind of ends up being piled. So how you tackle a garage is just like any other big overwhelming space. We start with trash. So on a nice day, what I would recommend is opening up the garage door, putting a bunch of trash bags and garbage bags in the driveway, and then moving out the things that you don't want to stay. Just like kick them out the door, like at least thin the herd. Like I haven't used these half paint cans. I'm going to drop them off at the next, you know, hazardous waste day just put them in the back of your trunk like get the stuff out like oh that's broken or i was going to sell that or i was going to fix that ruthlessly get that out of the garage and then the next step is zoning and this is actually fast to do so what you're going to do is put all the camping gear in one pile and decide where that's going to go you probably don't have a home for it yet and that's okay but it's going to live here sporting equipment here 
garbage cans here, gardening tools here. And now you have an idea of the next step, which is like, what kind of storage do I need? But until you've eliminated the things that you don't want to keep and zoned, how would you possibly know what kind of storage to purchase? So those are kind of like how you jumpstart a garage. And then unfortunately, there is an investment piece. We got to buy some sort of storage systems for garages. I agree. And you know, Honey Can Do, if you're, are you aware of that company, Honey Can Do? No. Yeah. Um, they do, like they sell stuff. I mean, there's stuff at Canadian Tire, Walmart, like Target, they're all over the day. They have like really, really um, unique solutions and they have a really cool um, garage line. And I totally agree with you. Like if you don't have adequate storage solutions in your garage, it becomes a dump site because there's no stacking, there's no shelves, there's no hangers. Like it's kind of like an empty space that you need to customize. So totally, have a look but you have to know who, what to buy before. That's why zoning is important. And, you can see like, and what you're this keeping is how much, there. exactly, exactly. Like this is how much camping gear I have. This is the sporting equipment. This is, then you get a better idea. You don't go and buy a bunch of things before you know what wall yeah. it's going on and how much storage you need for that particular category. So another thing that's really like Costco has shelves that are some of the only shelves I've ever found that are big enough for a standard tote. You know, if you go to Walmart and you buy the storage shelves, you can't actually put a plastic tote on them. So that's that's a total waste of a of that's a shelving crazy. unit. Yeah. So make yeah, sure so that you already own the totes that you buy shelving that can accommodate the totes that you have. Yes. Honey Can Do actually had this product. This is what was so cool. It was like a, a ceiling install. It was like oh, um like a track and you would slide your bins into this track and it would just make, it would just hold them overhead. So uh, mm -hmm. as long as it's installed properly, they won't fall on your car. Um, but I thought that was so cool because it's just making like extra use of that, that ceiling space. Uh, alrighty. Okay. So Jeep gal 48, I have an unfinished, I have unfinished hardwood floors. Is there anything I can mop them with to bring them back to life? I rent so I can't refinish them. Alrighty. So I feel you because unfinished hardwood floors kind of look old and aged and uneven. And this is what I'm going to tell you. That's part of their charm. Mm -hmm. um, unfortunately, with unfinished wood, there is nothing you can do to revive them and make them look beautiful, gorgeous, stunning, gleaming. There really isn't. Uh, if it were your own space, I would advise you to refinish them. But since it's not, you really don't have to sweat it. Now, you could talk to the landlord and say, would you be open to painting the floors? Would you be open to refinishing the floors? Is this something that you would consider? Maybe they will. Maybe they won't. Um, the best thing you can do is uh, sweep the floor with a bristle, like a, a heavy-duty bristle broom or use a vacuum that has um, kind of a bristly brush attachment so that you can get into any of those grooves where food and crumbs tend to collect. Like when you have a finished hardwood floor, you don't get that as much, but you're gonna wanna stay on top of that. And otherwise just lean into the charm, use scatter rugs, throw rugs, whatever it is that you can do to kind of fancy the place up and, and make it as beautiful as you can. Uh, and I would just say lean into it and perhaps reframe your approach and just appreciate the fact that you don't have to put much effort into it. Cass, how do we feel about that answer? Appreciate the yeah. fact that it's low effort. Yeah, I love that. And and I also think old worn wood floors are really kind of beautiful. I do too. I like them. I like them. I do. I do. <laughs> um, Cheryl says she's been retired since 2016 as a business professional. So she started to declutter her closet. How do you get over mourning the clothes you are decluttering? This has been so difficult for you, for her. Cheryl, I get it because not only are those clothes in your closet things you found beautiful, um, but they were part of your identity and an identity you were probably really proud of as a business professional. And now that you're retired, you're looking at those clothes and you're kind of mourning a past life. And so here's where I wanna talk about the mindset shift. 
every time you look in the closet and you see those clothes and you feel bad about the life you're living today, that makes those clothes toxic bullies. And we aren't living for the past, we're living for the future. And if there's clothes in your closet that make you ache for somebody that you are not today, they are bullies. And it is time for you to empower yourself and love yourself enough to only have clothes in your closet that make you feel good. And this goes for clothes that don't fit. And I'm not saying you have to let them go forever. You can pack them up, you can put them under the bed, you can, but they can't be in your closet, they can't be in your drawers because they're mean, because they're hurtful to you and, and your self-esteem. So I would say it's going to hurt to take them out and let them go and it's okay to be sad and it's okay to mourn, but as soon as they're gone, you will never think about them again. You will never think about them again. And even better, every day when you go to get ready, you're greeted by clothing that make you feel really happy and proud of who you are in this moment, today. And you don't feel bad because you don't have toxic bullies in your closet. So if you declutter nothing else, everyone watching this live, going in your closet and getting rid of clothes that you put, that you look at and feel bad about yourself, that is priority number one. Priority freaking number one. If you've gained 10 pounds and you look at that shirt and think, oh God, I'm so fat. I wish I could wear that. I'm going to keep it for later. You've now started your day calling yourself fat and hating yourself a little bit. Mm. That is unacceptable. They, you don't have to get rid of them, You can, but they have to leave your closet so that putting clothes on your body is nothing but a positive experience for yourself. Yeah. And I also I get fired like, up about this, Melissa. I get fired. Yeah, no, I know. I know. And like you also were talking about being greeted by um, clothes that make you feel good. And it is so hard to get dressed in the morning and pick something out that you feel good in as it is to have to then parse through and find like what fits me, what looks good, what can I do up? Like just to not have to go through that mental gymnastics and only see the stuff that fits you and looks great on you just allows you to have that easier start to your day. It's like one less friction this, point that you have to encounter. Yeah, and the stuff that fits you today. So I filmed the show, HGTV show, right? So I had a lot of like business jackets and suits and, and I was looking at them in my closet and I was like, I have no place to wear these. Oh, I'm kind of sad the show's over. Like every day it was like this little morning of this thing. Like, why am I doing that to myself? That's ridiculous. As soon as I remove them, I actually just pack them up and put them somewhere else in case I do go somewhere fancy one day. But now I not I don't I don't feel that, oh, I'm sad every day, right? I'm not reminded of that kind of sadness. So if you have like party dresses or something and you're like, you walk, mm -hmm. you look at them, you're like, mm, I wish I had someplace to wear the that's kind of sad that I'm why are you feeling that way about an article of clothing yeah such a good point such a good point thanks for thanks for breaking that down all right Bay Queen Mel says my mom is dead set on her spin mop how do I get her to give the maker's mop a try she's worried it won't work on kitchen tile because it has grooves so I feel like listen Spin mop people, they really are in a category of their own. They are totally obsessed. And spin mops have merit, like they work. What I love about the maker's mop is that it is just an all-in-one mopping system that is safe to use across all four surfaces. If your mom doesn't want to convert, let's not push it. But if she, for whatever reason, wants to try it, wants to use a mop to clean her baseboards, her walls, her high ceilings and doesn't want to have the spin mop, which is a big bulky bucket along with the mop itself. And she wants her floors to dry faster. Like even though spin mop, the idea is that you spin all the moisture out of the mop. I still know that you get streaks um, from the swipe marks. So with the maker's mop, you're not going to see that. Uh, you can perhaps encourage her to do that. You can invite her to read some reviews or watch videos on it. I would say that's the best you can do. I mean, listen, there's 31 flavors of Baskin Robbins for a reason, right? <laughs> you know, mm -hmm. not everybody yeah, likes it. Good. But hopefully your mom will be open-minded enough to give them off a shot. But thank you so much for being uh, one of our on-the-ground salespeople. I really do appreciate it. And I, like, I love 
when I hear, when I meet people who, who I know and they're like, Oh my God, I tried your mop and I love it. Like that makes me feel great. And I'm excited. But when I come across people who I don't know and they talk about the product, that's like twice the excitement for me. So thank you so much. Really. I, I, I mean that from the bottom of my heart. Thank you so much. Um, and I hope your mom eventually will give it a try. Um, grandma's so happy homestead. I just say, I love your name. Grandma's so happy spelled. So like she sews. That's good. Anyways, she says, I uh, have been watching on her TV. She had to say hi. She loves us both. Um, we motivate her when she has the frumps. She went through her file drawer and it is correct. We don't need to keep old medical things from years ago, but she's battling being afraid just in case these are from eight years ago. So the thing is, if it's really bothering you, if you're really like, what if I, I do have a medical record where I keep the latest blood work reports and I keep those type of things just for my own peace of mind. So why not give yourself a dedicated space where you keep the latest test results that you have from things that are eight years ago? I'm going to say it's okay to let them go. If you haven't needed to access them up until now, you can feel that peace of mind that you're never going to need them. And anytime you declutter things like this, as soon as it leaves your house, you never think about it again. So like the stress and anxiety is like for 10 seconds, you only have to be brave for like a second and then it's over and you never have to think about it again. Decluttering is always kind of scary and anxiety inducing in the beginning until we've built that muscle, until we've trained our brain that it feels good. So don't push yourself too hard, like honestly, but just keep coming back to it, coming back to it. I bet you'll find one day you'll come to it and you're like, oh, actually, I feel comfortable letting this go today. Yeah. Um I would say, like, I love, I love that answer. And my approach as a recovering hypochondriac is I enjoy mm. retaining my medical records, like just in case, but I would say stuff from my twenties, like I'm in my forties now, that is not relevant. Like mm -hmm. they say your body regenerates itself pretty much what every seven years. So, yeah. you know, physically, if it's not, um, you know, it's not about like a long term or um, what's the word I'm looking for? Oh, I'm not a medical professional. A long term health problem. We're just going to go with that. If it's not a long term health problem, then it's not something that, you know, I would necessarily hang on to. Mm -hmm. um, and, but and, at the I, same time, like I, I dislocated my shoulder in 2020. I'm going to keep that information because God forbid, if I dislocate it again, that's historically really good information mm -hmm. for me to be able to pass on to a doctor. So I would say you can be kind of choosy with what you keep, but Cass is right. Like old blood work from, you know, several years ago, probably not relevant, but kind of those longer term chronic, chronic health issue. That's what, thank you, Brian. That's, that's so weird. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. Um, that's I'm, the kind I'm of I'm a I, I'm a hypochondriac too. I love that you said that. And I did something years ago that really uh, gave me like so much peace of mind. So I have a household management binder that has a medical section and I've updated like the meds that I'm on, all my pre-existing conditions, all the surgeries I've had in the past, all like latest blood work, anything that's happened that's been key. I keep that in a binder because I was like keeping them, but you really, it's more important if something happens to you. My husband's not going to think to go look in the file cabinet for my eight-year-old medical records. He has it all into one place. And I also have that information for my parents and my loved ones because my stepfather, I'm going to be real fast. Uh, he's passed away, but he, a few years ago had a heart attack when he was unconscious and they called everyone to say, what meds is he taking? Like what? And no one knew, including my mm. mom. So mm. like, you know, writing down this pertinent information and having it somewhere that's easily accessible makes it easier to not only let the other stuff go because you feel safe having it all together, but it could potentially save your life or someone else's life too. Just having a, an up-to-date, thorough medical file. Yeah. And you know what I will say on that note is if you have an iPhone, the health app on your phone actually allows you 
It is so detailed and so in depth, and you can actually record the medications, the doses that you take. And if you are ever in an emergency situation, they can access that information. Um, you, you, you know, it, it'll come up on a screen. You have to sort of give permission if you're in an emergency um, for that to be able to be accessed. But the health app is there for that exact reason, so that That's all cool. of that information is trackable and that you can rest easy knowing that that information in an emergency will be available. Um, Cass, it's been, uh, oh, we have one more question. Okay. Wanda, how to clean sticky residue from wood kitchen cabinets. I've used Dawn and water as a start, but it didn't completely remove it. Okay. So what we're going to do in this case, we're going to try a couple different things. Wanda, the first thing we can try is an enzyme type cleaner. So something like back out by BioClean or something like crud cutter. These are both very easy to find. Uh, you're gonna spray them on to the surface. You're gonna let them sit for a little bit and then you're gonna wipe them off. Um, you can do a rinse afterward, like a rinsing wipe afterward, and these will eat away at the grease on the surface. The other thing you can do is use a solvent. So um, again, going back to what we talked about earlier, um, eucalyptus essential oil is a great solvent as is rubbing alcohol. However, I wouldn't necessarily use those on wood kitchen cabinets. Um, some people would even recommend like a citrus-based cleaner or something like a Goo Gone. To me, that's quite strong, so I wouldn't wanna go there. I would start with the enzyme-based cleaners. Now, the other thing you can try if you have is a steam cleaner. That's really good at getting grease off of cabinets. So keep that in mind, Wanda. Um, Cass, we've kept people for almost 17 minutes longer than we said we would, but we got a lot of questions and I think we helped a lot of people today and it was really fun hanging out with you. I like hanging out with you too. Lives are so much more fun with two people for sure. Oh, I totally agree. Let us know in the comments if you want to see this happen again. Um, Cass, why don't you remind people where they can find you and what they can expect? Yeah, you can go to clutterbug.com. You can take the free quiz. I won't even ask for your email and find out more about your organizing style. Get lots of inspiration. Or you can just Google Clutterbug and find me anywhere that you like to watch social media. Yeah, and same goes for us. You can use the handle Clean My Space uh, and find us in our pathetic TikTok account, which I'm trying so hard to build. <laughs> Um, so yeah, we want to be fun and follow us there. Um, of course, you can go to cleanmyspace.com uh, and of course, makersclean.com, which is where all of our microfiber cleaning products and more are available. Uh, happy Friday, everyone. Thanks for joining us. Thanks for talking about cleaning and organizing. Not always the most exciting topic, but certainly something that hopefully gets you started on a positive note for your weekend. Uh, stay warm and stay well, and uh, we'll see you soon. Take good care and bye, Cass. Good to see you. Bye, Melissa. Thanks so much.